Hi, welcome to Integrity Matters vidcast. We have a pleasure of hosting Professor Pip Patterson, the DVC of Education at the University of Sydney. Hello, Pip. Hi, how thank are you? you? <laughs> I'm great, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, I really wanted to start with, I think, the, 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 natural, the natural start of the conversation. So how and why did you decide to work in education? Uh, yes, that's a, it's a great question. Um, I spent many years as a regular teaching and research academic um, in a department of psychology with an interest in mathematics. So being interested in learning is a very natural thing for a psychologist to do. Um, it's one of the core, core kind of problem areas for psychology. Um, and so uh, I got very interested both in my own department work um, in the nature of learning and how I could impact on learning. So I just developed, I think, an interest naturally. Mm -hmm. And then I did a bit of research um, from time to time with colleagues who were more expert on learning than I was. Right. But that really sparked my interest. And then when an opportunity came up um, at Melbourne to uh, lead the academic board, I jumped at it because um, the academic board has really sort of had the... Um, the responsibility for maintaining academic quality standards. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I had an opportunity to become a sort of leader in the education strategy. And so that's what I've been doing ever since and loving it. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, and then from University of Melbourne, you moved to University of yes. Sydney and become the DVC of uh, education. Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your role and where your focus um, lies currently? Yes, no, so it's been uh, wonderful to be at the University of Sydney for the last five years, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, we've, we've done a lot, I think. Um, and when I arrived, the university had, had a lot of conversations about how it wanted to work and how it wanted to be organised, but it hadn't really got to the task of asking about, you know, what's education need to be looking like for the mm -hmm. 21st century and the next 160 years. So... Um, we set about a conversation around the university about, you know, what, what an education at Sydney should mean and how we would go about delivering it. Um, and so um, that responsibility for education strategy is one of the sort of real attraction points um, mm -hmm. of the role. Um, but I'm also responsible for the quality of teaching and learning, for our e-learning strategy, for our approach to the development of research skills in our high degree by research students. So it's it's quite a broad uh, role. And in the last um, year and a half, I've also taken on responsibility for the student experience much more broadly. So student life and all of all of the aspects of being a student. Within your role as well, do you have a passion project, an area of focus that that you that you really um, wanting to pursue? Uh, yes, and I, th I think everyone who's in a DVC education or academic role has a passion uh -huh. project or two, <laughs> and I have twin projects, if oh, I might. Please, please tell me So about one it. is very much about the curriculum, you know, what are the skills we're trying to build, and the other is the way in which we um, build those skills, so how do we actually go about designing and creating learning experiences and kind of ensuring that the pathway into those experiences is a, is a well-supported one for students so that students can really get the most out of their yep. opportunity of being at university. And um, we've very much taken a role that students need that old-fashioned depth and rigour in, in at least one discipline, but in the contemporary world, they need a much broader set of skills as well. So it's been a, a real joy over the last five years to work with colleagues across the university about creating a framework within which we can develop those skills in every single student. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, uh, that's been fun. And it's got a very strong experiential component. We really want students to be um, put in a scaffolded series of more challenging situations, uh, culminating in some sort of really genuine problem solving for external partners um, so that students gradually build up the confidence and skills to make the most of what they've learned and work out how how, the, how they need to construct learning of the next thing they need to know in order to solve the problem that's in front of them. And 
when we say that that education is is changing, mm -hmm. and you know, and working towards making sure that students' experience, um, you know, is the best possible. Within that, with technology changing so rapidly, mm. um, how does this impact the tertiary sector, the university sector, um, and obviously the learning and teaching experience as well? Yes, that's a great question, and it's a very deep question because it's it's quite a complicated um, scenario mm. in my view. Um, I think there are some fundamentals about teaching and learning um, that learning is much more natural if it's occurring within a, a social context, a situated context where there are potentially those who know a little bit more than you in the room who can guide you in a particular direction. But um, it, it's also the case that a lot of the technology kind of components can help speed up that process of um, uh, building a conceptual understanding, testing that conceptual understanding, recognising that there's a little bit more you need to learn and it doesn't quite all fit into place. I think that process can be sped up by technology, but I think there's still a very deep role for sort of human support around that. And so we as a university are very um, keen, particularly in the undergraduate level, to maintain a pretty strong face-to-face -face, um, uh, collaborative approach to learning, students learning together, actually learning from each other as well as from the person in the room who's designing the experience, who's trying to sort of nudge them in a particular direction. Um, but technology, yes, the, the opportunities are just extraordinary. The capacity to um, engage um, with materials and resources that are very rich and authentic without necessarily kind of being there. So um, we've got a very active group in virtual reality and augmented reality, and I think there's a lot of opportunities there. The use of um, high fidelity simulations in a lot of fields is transformational. So that's also um, very good access to data from all around the world and resources and, and building the skills to do something with that. I mean, the, the opportunities for teaching are just amazing with the technology we now have. And I think the greatest challenge for us is actually to work out how to combine um, the opportunity that that creates um, in the process of designing experiences which really create great learning and create the skills to um, learn the next time around, perhaps without the same level of guidance. And when we're talking about creating the opportunity to learn and the learning process itself, I think it's, um, it's also a good place to ask about academic integrity. Yes. Um, what role does academic integrity play in the University of Sydney's strategic plan? Yes, I, I, I think we, I doubt that we've mentioned academic integrity in our current strategic mm -hmm. plan. And I think the reason for that is it's such a deeply held value that it's one of those things you just don't need to mention. It's a given, it's a commitment, um, it's everywhere. Um, and I, I can't think of a, a topic that excites more um, academic concern that there's been a breach of integrity. And I think most academics care very deeply about integrity. And it's certainly very much a focus of the work that we do and, and we have an office of educational integrity in my portfolio which um, plays a very active educational role but also it's, it's, uh, it, it provides um, uh, understanding across the university of what's happening when things go wrong if there are uh, suspected or, or actual cases of academic um, integrity breach. Hmm. And do you think that students care about academic integrity as much as, as, as instructors, as staff? I suspect they have a different understanding of academic integrity. In fact, I, I think that's what the research um, clearly shows, um, that their concerns are a bit different. Um, having said that, I think um, if it comes to the idea of being honest about um, the academic enterprise, particularly at the at the edges of what we know, and you know, at the point of discovery, I can't imagine a student not being 
as committed to the idea of integrity as staff are. So I think it's more about the sort of games we play in the classroom, mm -hmm. where students' understanding is it's perhaps sometimes a little different. Um, and I think when it comes to, you know, when, when we're looking for, you know, how to improve our understanding of the world, I think they'd be as committed to integrity as everyone else. Mm. Mm. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, and with your background in mathematics and psychology, mm. I would be really interested to know how you and, and your office mm. uh, encourage and instill academic integrity principles mm. in, in your students. Yes, no, thank you. I, I think probably um, because of my background, but also because of what what um, a lot of staff around the world have shown in studies of um, academic integrity. Students need to develop the, um, that same value and we need to create ways in which they can develop and understand what our cultural commitment is to integrity and, and we hope that they will take that on. Um, so I think probably the smartest thing I did was to ask um, one of our best psychology lecturers to develop um, the module that we ask all students to do when they join the university on academic integrity, which takes them through in a very careful and well-considered way what the issues are and why integrity matters and, and what exactly we mean by um, various things and what, what the challenges they, that they might find in the environment, the kind of um, the temptations that might be there to engage in cheating at some point point in time. Um, but I, 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 and I think treating the idea of integrity in as intellectual a way as possible um, and explaining in a pretty dispassionate way what the issues are is, you know, is a good approach. And um, I must say, I think, um, I think that's been um, quite effective. It's made quite a big difference to um, the rates of um, breaches that we identify. Um, and we also have a sort of second level of education if a student, you know, produces a piece of work which either hasn't appropriately referenced the source or, um, or, or has, you know, there's some minor concern that it raises, um, we have a second stage of education and that the combination of those two things is very effective. We rarely see uh, a further breach. Um, of course, if a student commits a serious breach, then that's a serious matter and um, they can have their um, candidate terminated um, and we, we don't back away from that either. Of course. Um, mm. But I'm hearing it's still a very much educational yeah, approach exactly. to, to academic yes. integrity and, yes. and teaching students that. Yes. So in, in your experience, mm. what drives student misconduct in the area of, of academic integrity? I, th I think it's a mixture of panic and lack of preparation. So I think everything we can do to support students to be um, monitoring um, their progress and um, building those sort of metacognitive skills that allow them to plan and um, um, plan their work in a way that, um, you know, they've got enough time to do what they need to do. I think most of the time when students do cheat, it's not that they want to cheat for the sake of cheating, it's they're caught in a, in a situation that's not to their liking and um, they fear the consequences. So, um, and of course, uh, we live in an environment now where there's a lot of opportunities um, to cheat, you know, through the rise of contract cheating and the like, and I think that does make it quite difficult for students. Um, uh, particularly if they are in that situation of being a bit compromised with respect to time or, or work completed already. Sure. Mm. And for my mm. last question, if you had a magic wand <laughs> and you had one wish, what, what would you spend it on in terms of, of your role, uh, academic integrity, um, education? Ah, it would have to be quite a big wand. <laughs> but what I would love to do is have every student who joins our university have a period at when they first join of a dedicated and intensive um, period where they get to know their peers um, and we can work with them in a very um, 
uh, rich way so that we, we get to know the students, they get to know each other. Because I think being socially connected to uh, peers and to the university and comfortable in the environment is the thing that will most enable our students to really get the most out of their educational experience. Definitely. Mm. Thank you very much, Pep. That's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for, um, for joining us for this vidcast. And hopefully you found it as interesting as I did. Thank you.